Hey, what's up? It's Kit Time for another video. Today, we are going to be talking about this micro assist. I know it's a challenge for a lot of people to make these consistently. And, uh, you know, we're always looking for an easy way. So I'm going to show you guys one of the easiest, cleanest ways to do this. Uh, as you can see here, this is a tiny jig. Actually, that's a 15 gram Storm Koika. We have flash, very, very clean bindings. It's super strong actually for, for what it is. Anyway, um, if you're new to the channel, I make educational fishing videos. We cover everything from uh, jigging, fly fishing, trolling, everything in between. There's a lot for everyone in this channel. So if you like this sort of thing, consider subscribing. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. now. Let's go ahead and start this video. Alrighty, here we go. So I've secured a hook, my preferred hook to device, putting on a base layer. Now, thread base is very important, especially with with uh, these types of hooks. It has PTFE coating on it, so it's very slick. Cutting with a knife as opposed to a pair of scissors will make you have cleaner wraps, at the, especially towards the very end. Now, when you cut with scissors, it leaves a tag. This hook is an owner JF41, number 11. It's small, wires uh, thin, and uh, there you go. It's 20 pounds or 9 kilos capacity. So for such a tiny hook, it's quite strong. Now, with the flash, <clears throat> it would be helpful to wet the tips when you're doing this. Count, I have like six uh, in a bunch. And this started out as a long length. And what I did was to just take six and then uh, bunch them up and then wet them either with saliva or with some water. Now, what, what you saw me do there earlier was to actually cut the uh, tips so that they'd be aligned. Okay, so so I used this whole bunch for maybe a, a half a dozen assist hooks that I'm making at this sitting right here. And you do the wraps first. You secure the flash first, and then you cut it to length. And it's pretty easy. It's pretty straightforward. Um no hang ups or no nothing yeah it's it's very actually very easy to uh do this thing and it's very easy to stay consistent as well now you could stop and and uh you know do this process uh first uh take a bunch and then after that go back and do this now as far as the cord is concerned all you have to do is just get like in this case it is a hundred pound test braid and as you can see there all i did was to actually put a square knot at the very end I'm showing you how I'm cutting it to length and all you do is get a ruler line the uh, two knots up and for me this is at uh, I believe right one for this would be about five centimeters we're looking at about two inches now if you manage to hit this length consistently it would be very predictable of course for each and every single length of assist hook that you make. And this is very important to be very, very consistent. And right there, so five centimeters. That's what we need for this particular length because we're rigging koikas and similar jigs. So five thereabouts doesn't have to be super exact, but the more exact you are with these things, the better. And it's very simple, you know, um, square knot, right there and then tighten everything up as much as possible you cut it as close to the knot as possible because you want it to be very very clean and then you burn the tips with a lighter and you'll end up with something that's actually pretty pretty clean now the wraps go about to the tip of the hook and then you start your wrap so as you can see here, we could just wrap touching turns all the way going to the back. The first pass doesn't have to be super clean. It's to secure everything. But make sure that you have a lot of tension there as much as you can. 
and then as you go back you cover all the gaps you pretty much only need about two or three of these and then you could tie off i'm using a whip finish i'm using my hands but you could use half hitches you could use a tool for this and it is that simple obviously after this um you could super glue everything um i prefer to super glue mine in batches so that i just open the tip of the super glue once and then do everything and then that's it now I've already pre-made one of these hooks with a flash, as you can see here. So it's easier. Like I mentioned earlier, you could actually do them in batches. And then you could just start your thread again. Because I'm using very thin thread, it doesn't bulk up. And this is one of the most important things, especially for micro. Okay, again, I'm cutting the, uh, the braid with a pair of cutters. Uh, the bad thing about this is that you have to spend a lot for the cartridge or the extra what do you call this the extra blades because braid dulls this uh the blades okay now one of the things that you should actually really consider when you're doing this type of method is having a rotary vice now i'm showing you guys how to do this without rotating it because I know a lot of people don't have rotary vices but you have to be very careful that is an upturned hook right there you could easily get impaled and especially with PTFE hooks they they just penetrate without you without you feeling any resistance okay so make sure that your length is long enough so that you could just go to the outside of the hook uh, takes a bit of practice to do this but yeah it's it's uh, relatively easy uh, again the challenge for this one of course is um, doing your half hitches or doing your whip finish for my case right here um, tighten up that's that's pretty much it as you can see here I'm gonna show you how close this uh, cut is going to be and you can see that there's really no tag there and at this point you could super glue it uh, if you're doing a small batch but I'm doing quite a big batch so I'm just gonna leave the super gluing way later when I have quite a lot of them even if you, you could actually do this with the big ones now not easy putting solid rings on this I have to say because you know these are so small and even if my fingers aren't that big it's it's actually quite a challenge okay now if you have these um, assist hook pullers it's actually easy uh, or relatively easier to actually do them now very first thing you do is cinch everything down because believe it or not this will move and it's not because of your bindings are bad it's actually the, the 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 binding slipping on the PTFD and it snugs everything and as soon as you do that it sets itself okay and once it's set then that's it you're ready to put on the solid ring and my my god it's not easy my fingers look ginormous here but they're actually not um, of course you still have to do your 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 one pass and then you'll turn and twist like a regular assist hook uh, you could also do just one and then do the threads but I, I kind of don't like that because it's not really as consistent uh, it's so small that I need to or it's so tight that I have to use this uh, bodkin just to pry the uh, solid ring off of the braid and there we go we got it out we are now gonna tighten things but here's a tip now when you're once you're once you're at this point what you need to do is actually spread out the uh the loops that you've formed there as much as possible before you tighten so that you actually have the cleanest possible knot otherwise it's gonna look really weird with some twists in it all right so that's it right there as you can see finished assist hook the uh, lengths of the 
flash equal the number always equal the wraps equal you could get very very consistent and it doesn't take too long really so yeah um let me rig the jig up and i'll show you now you could rig more than just the koika for this obviously there's um like a, a few jigs that you could rig with this even major craft ones the, the slow major crafts out I love the major craft shore slow jigs. Problem is, I also find some of their hooks quite thick. So this is a very good replacement for that jig. And now, instead of just putting a single hook there, you could actually put two doubles. All right. Now, right now we're just testing it out to see how it looks like up in front of the koika. You could choose to use this as a single, but as I showed you earlier when I was uh, showing you, I put these actually at the back because they're a longer length and I always put the longer lengths at the back. But on its own right here, you could actually see that you could just put one if you choose. But since it's kind of easy to, you know, make these and be consistent with them, especially with the lengths, you could put two now. And this is the usual rigging. You just put one um, assist hook on top and it works really well. Anyway, so yeah, that's it. Hope you like this video. Um, if you learned something, please consider subscribing, if, especially if you're new to the channel. We're growing quite fast. I'm quite pleased of how it's going. For those guys that have subscribed, thank you, thank you very much. If you like the video, give it a thumbs up. And uh, yeah, that's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Class dismissed. You must be really bored to just stay around and see me dangling a jig in front of the camera right here. But hey, congrats. You've reached the end. There's nothing more to watch. And you're a weirdo just like I am. Anyway, thanks for watching. Uh, appreciate it.